Welcome to my lecture online. One of the most interesting topics in astronomy is the consideration of life in the universe. The question, are we alone? Is the Earth the only place in the galaxy and more so in the entire universe where life or intelligent life exists? Wow. So not only is that a scientific question, it's also a philosophical question because science in itself doesn't have all the answers. But we can look at things. We can look at things such as what is necessary for life? What is life really? What defines life? How did life begin? Those kind of things. And then look at the answers to those and then piece together the probability that life potentially exists. And there have been individuals such as Drake who came out with what we call the Drake equation where we try to plug in numbers to those assumptions and then see in the end depends upon what the numbers are that we put in there, and obviously we put low-end and high-end numbers, then what would then be the probability, based on that equation, that life exists, that intelligent life exists, that we have the ability to communicate with intelligent life? And of course, if we ever get to the point where we can actually communicate, and typically that would be done through radio, radio, radiation, radio radiation and then radio telescopes, Wow, if we ever were able to communicate with another intelligent race somewhere else, that would be absolutely phenomenal. That would be the event of all of humanity, I would think. But let's start from the beginning. Let's start to figure out, are we alone or is there a possibility that life actually exists somewhere else? And then, of course, not just life, but intelligent life with whom we could potentially communicate, who have built up the technology so that we can actually have communication via radio telescopes. So let's take a look here. We do know for sure that in our solar system, life does not exist other than on Earth. Now, there's a slight possibility that life might live on Europa. There is potentially an under, under the thick layer of ice on Europa, there is a liquid ocean, and potentially there might be life in that liquid ocean. Again, it's probably very unlikely. There's probably a few other places in our solar system where life could exist. Mars could have one point have had life on its surface because Mars used to be much more Earth-like than it is today. It used to have oceans and rivers and an atmosphere and a thicker atmosphere. It has a little bit of an atmosphere now. And perhaps at some point life may have started evolving on that planet. And of course now that the planet is no longer a livable planet, it would have had become extinct. But we may still find traces, some evidence that that life was there. And of course we're trying to find that. We have had no success so far, and it's very possible that it never occurred on Mars either. But then if you think about what are the possibilities somewhere else, because our galaxy is absolutely enormous. It's just incredible how large our galaxy is and how many stars there are in our galaxy. There are somewhere around 250 billion stars in our galaxy, and now we know that there's at least that many planets. We would probably think that there's at least one planet for every star, and potentially more. And quite a few of those planets are probably in the vicinity of a star where life could exist, where all the conditions are just right where life could exist. And of course, if there's, let's say, 250 billion or 500 billion planets, even if a small percentage of those planets were potentially favorable for life, life would potentially then, of course, develop on those planets. And then if you think that there's 200 billion galaxies just in the visible portion of the universe, and if you then multiply the number of planets in each galaxy times the number of galaxies, well, that's what I try to do here. Let's say the average number of planets per galaxy is 100 billion, because our galaxy is a little bit bigger than average. Not all galaxy, galaxies have 250 billion stars. But let's say there's about 100 billion planets in each galaxy. There's 200 billion galaxies. That's 2 times 10 to the 22 planets. That's an incredible number of planets. That's a lot of probabilities that life may exist on some of those planets, maybe quite a few of those planets. So, you never know. Now, another thing that has changed over the years with astronomy is we've begun to realize that water, either in frozen state or liquid state, is very, very uh, common in our solar system and probably in the entire universe. Carbon is very prevalent in our, in our solar system, potentially in the entire universe. So those are some of the basic things that we need for life. And so lots of planets, lots of water, lots of carbon. 
Yes, it is hard to imagine that we're the only place in the universe where life exists and intelligent, even intelligent life exists. However, there's still some very big challenges to go from a planet where life doesn't exist to a planet where life exists. Yes, there are some very big obstacles for life to come about. And we'll talk about some of those things. And so we'll try to put things into perspective, not just the process of life evolving from non-living materials, but also having all the right conditions for life to survive in this universe, because this universe is really a very, very inhospitable place to life. We have X-rays, gamma rays, UV radiation, we have solar winds, we have uh, cosmic rays, we have all these things that are deadly to life. We have places where it's too hot, there's places where it's way too cold, there's places where there's no water, there's places where there's no atmosphere, there's places where there's no magnetic fields. So yes, there's many places where life probably just would not survive. There are challenges to life. And so it'll be very interesting as we go through this set of videos to see to kind of have a, a way of thinking about the possibility of life existing other places besides Earth. So let's start the journey and see what we uncover. But you'll only, can, you'll only be um, looking at carbon-based, nitrogen-based life forms. So yes, is, is life based on carbon alone or are there other possibilities of life? Well, it turns out, uh, and we'll do a video on that, by the way, that Besides carbon, there really isn't any good substitute for carbon. There really isn't. Yes, theoretically there is, but in practical perspective, there isn't. And so we'll take a look at that. But without life and without carbon, it's very, very unlikely for life to exist. <laughs> I see an expression that doesn't agree with me, but that's okay. We'll get through this and we'll see where this goes. <laughs>